you're watching America Trends, and I have a legitimate Renaissance fan sitting here with me. I'm Mary Burke Godwin, and I have a special guest. He's a media commentator, an educator, foreign, former law enforcement. He's now a law enforcement analyst, community leader, real estate agent, podcast host, many, many more things. Uh, former San Diego police officer. Were you the police chief of police, too? No. 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 You weren't that. I was you way down at the bottom. <laughs> okay. I was at the bottom of this. Mark Powell, welcome yeah. to America Trends. Thank you for having We're me. We're so happy to have oh, you nice. today. You know, th there's so many things. Just before we started, you and I started talking, we're both native San Diegans. We could probably talk for a whole show. We'll have to have you back again. Today, specifically, I want to talk about the back to school episode, kind of. So we, I have kids that are back to school. Um, and I want to talk about the public school system, where we're at with things, and uh, I want to dive in a little bit to like college prep too, which you were just telling me you have a son that just that left. Is, well, I have a daughter. A daughter. So okay. I have a daughter at UCLA and another daughter at USD, and it just dropped the daughter off at USD, and it wasn't as, it wasn't as challenging because she's 14 minutes away. I was going to say so that's like, not really dramatic. No but it, but, tears for you. Well, not not for my wife. Okay, okay. She was like, oh, I'm like, she can just come home. <laughs> But can she call an Uber and just drive home? My whole entire Facebook feed right now is but, videos and photos yeah. of moms dropping their kids off and crying. And uh, I have to turn that off because I'm not there right. yet and I can't future trip about it when it's going to Senator USD, you won't do that. There then. you go. That's, that's, back that's, back a good, that's a good tip. But so, you know, um, I'm hearing all sorts of things about public school teachers, people leaving the industry because they're not making enough. And it's becoming more and more challenging to be a teacher. Is that what you're experiencing? Well, I can, I can explain, other... explain to you why. It's yeah, very talk, simple. Talk to me. They're, they don't make enough money. So let's, let's just look at San Diego. To rent a two-bedroom condo in San Diego, it's going to cost you about $3,000 a month. Even a one-bedroom is going to be like twenty-five, twenty-six hundred. dollars When you're making between fifty and 70000 depending on where you are on the scale, teachers are paid by how many years of service down one row okay. and then by their education on another row. So the more, more education they have, the more they slide upon this scale. Okay. But let's just pretend you're making what, $60,000 a year and it's, that's what, what, five times 12, $5,000 a month. Mm -hmm. After taxes, you're bringing home, what, 4,000? Yeah, if that. Your rent is 3,000. So how are you gonna live on $1,000? Right. You're gonna pay for cable, gas. We pay the highest electricity in San Diego. Yes. We pay. Oh, it's nuts. So if you're looking at going into a profession, it's not really, it's not lucrative. And, it's not lucrative, yeah. And, and so, so what you have is a lot of people that are qualified to be a teacher, so they just go in another profession. So w one question I have is, do private school teachers make more or less? Um, Private school teachers used to make a lot less. That's because, what I heard. Because yeah. it was there's not a requirement to have a degree, uh, I mean a teaching credential. Okay. But the level of education at private schools now is is pretty good. Yeah. I mean, you look in San Diego. You have Francis Parker, the Bishop School, La Jolla Country, Country Day, Day yeah. the Jewish Academy. We have some pretty high performing schools, and then you can tell by how well the schools are doing by where are the kids going to college. Right. And a lot of these kids. Harvard, Stanford, yeah. you know, UCLA, Berkeley, Yale, a lot of very, very good academic colleges. So you can judge the level of quality of the school as to where the kids are, are ending up. Okay. But that's a whole nother thing about you're going to go through some stuff when you have to get your kids ready for college. Well, I want to talk about that. First, I want to get to this concept of I did not know this was happening, did not know this was a thing, but some schools or districts around the country are going to a four-day week. week. Right. Is that real? 100%. 900 districts in the United States. Wow. And I'm hoping it doesn't come to San Diego, but I'm going to tell Wait, you. Yeah, why? I can tell you why. Well, if you had any other job, whatever job it is, and you're making $60,000 a year, and you go, hey, you're going you're gonna to work five days a week. All right, I make $60,000, I work five days a week. But what if somebody said, hey, you only have to work four days a week and make $60,000. I'll take four. Right. So they're able to recruit more teachers. Yeah, right. So it's all a recruitment thing. But the problem is kids need a longer school year, not a shorter school year. Right. With this, you know, the lockdowns affected kids. Right. academically mm -hmm. but not just seniors I mean every oh, the, every grade middle level schoolers. right that's where my kids were at every and grade yeah, level. it was yeah a year and a half yes just I definitely have talked to a lot of my friends that had kids that were in the middle school and you know ending grade school middle school where they were starting to learn how to do homework and then they just weren't 
it, they didn't figure it out because there wasn't a homework and they uh, barely were punched in at all. Do you think the teachers could figure it out when you no. have a teacher that says, all right, you're about to do online teaching. They're like, what? I just learned how to put an attachment on an email. <laughs> how am I, I going to do this? Right. It was a tall call for teachers. Right. And the teachers that I know, they're very good people. Sure. They're, they're the salt of the earth. They're kind. They're, they're caring. I mean, occasionally you get, you get a bad one in there. Right. But for the most, for the part, most part, I love the, I used to be a teacher. So I know, yeah. I mean, I taught in school, so. But this whole thing about shortening the school year, how do you get better at something if you don't practice it more? Let's, right. let's say I want to be better at golfing. I'm not going to go to the driving range less time. Right. You got to go, go more time. Go more. So time on task over time. So I have no idea how these kids are going to do in a four day week. Would they make the days longer? Yes, but okay. you're, you know, too much you ever seen that far side thing? My brain is full. <laughs> like how much you can't only study so much. Right. You, and this actually leads me to my next question was prepping for college. I'm kind of a junior. So we're thinking oh. about what are her activities and what are the classes she's taking? And it's so much pressure. She spends 16 hours a week in the dance studio. She's at school. Oh, that's nice. So it's really challenging, though, because then I'm like, I got to add in more things than the, just the dance. It is such a cumbersome process. Is it a crock though? <laughs> I mean, I, like do I, <laughs> no, Well, no, it's not. Because okay. if, you're, if you want your child to go to a school, they're gonna have to fill out an application. And luckily I have some means. I had to hire a company. So we hired a At preparatory company that helped fill out the application. Yep. There's essays that they have to right. write. They go back, they review the essays. There's forms they have to fill out and then they have to send them common app you have to send yeah. it here and there she was studying for the the SAT. SATs yeah and from what I understand some schools are not taking them right but a lot of schools are still, still looking at those yeah the UC system doesn't even no. look at them anymore but I, I guess what my question was is it a crock for colleges to be requiring these things it just seems like they're asking too much of the kids on these things uh, on it is an overwhelming amount of information but the sad thing is that there's a whole lot of kids that do not have the resources the financial resource right. they don't have parents that pro may not speak English there may be parents that are just in the house and to put this all on the school and the counselors look you have one counselor for 500 students right. How, what's that counselor gonna do they can't right. they can't sit with a person so right. it's just it's it's a, a very challenging situation yeah. for our underserved population of students well, to apply to college. It's such a pleasure speaking with you. I feel like we could talk about a bunch of different things, and mm -hmm. we're out of time at the moment. Okay. But I'd like to have you back again if you'd come back. We can talk hey, about real tea. So we can talk about education. We can talk about I'm, San Diego. I'm so excited to be invited back. That's I want to hear <laughs> stories about the police chief world, too. Oh, that's You're watching fun. America Trends. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is Mark Powell, and we'll be back again tomorrow here on biztv.com.